for 20, 28 days and uh, for the very creative name of I made it in 28 days. Now, did I make a lo-fi album just so that I could play lo-fi music without having copyright free music or copyrighted music, which would be even worse? Yes. So there is actually a lot of really cool stuff going on that I'm really happy with. Um, there's some cool techy stuff going on. In the some groovy chord stuff happening in this one. And of course, it wouldn't be lo-fi without the Japanese. But yeah, as I made this album really quickly, I kind of wanted to show you guys how I did that. So, okay, obviously it's lo-fi. It's not very hard. I'm not trying to say that I'm a genius. Um, lo-fi is probably one of the simplest genre to make it's like you do four things as you'll see um, and also at the time I was very very passionate about making lo-fi so um, that helps a lot with the creative process too okay so here we are in Cubase I've got the truck project track up this is the track called tutorial which I made intentionally it was the track 11 as you can see uh, I actually <laughs> I'd made more but um, a lot of the tracks got destroyed uh, just during some like cloud exchanges and such. So I had to restart. But anyway, point is, this is a track that I made with the intention of being a tutorial. So I'm just gonna listen really quickly to what it sounds like and then um, gonna go with it. Okay, that goes on for a long time. There's some extra sections and stuff, but I don't wanna, you can just listen to the track if you want. So I'm not a great piano player. It's time. So I, I can't really practice. So because of this, I have to do a lot of editing, basically. Um, I still use the piano and I use this as more of a guideline to give me sign of the idea of the rhythm and the overall uh, contour of the pitch and the piece and whatnot. And as I may have mentioned before, I will mimic myself as if I was an actually good piano player, even though the notes that I'm playing are garbage. So I'm going to show you this first level, which is the, um, this is the like really dodgy version of the, of the thing. So yeah, you can hear obviously that, you know, the overall tonality is still there. I mean, I didn't change the key uh, and um, the, the, there's a lot of elements that even stayed. So what I'll first do, as mentioned, is I'm going to edit the uh, all the notes. So they go from this to this, slightly edited, and we can hear it again. It's gonna sound a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. Still, some of the velocities are gonna be off and, um, the processing hasn't been done and whatnot. So some small changes are gonna happen after this stage, but this is like the main, taking what I've got from the sketch and improved it.
Yeah, so now that actually sounds nice, I adjust the velocities and then there were three sections here that again, I can play for you really quick. And basically these sections are just the three, I didn't want one part to repeat the whole song. So there's mainly that first part, a bit of the second, a tiny bit of the third, just to provide a little bit of a variety. But now that the things have adjusted, um, you can hear that slowly. Improved. <laughs> uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the velocities a little bit more and then order the track in such a way that it actually sounds good. Now what's important too is a big distinction as well besides a little bit of the besides the velocity and stuff is the actual processing with quite nice okay so what have I done there I have firstly added as I added this as you can see here, it's got a big low cut because as always, you want to cut off all those frequencies. You can see there that there's a bunch of them and we just don't want them grouping. Next is I added this big, 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 big high cut. Um, and that just provides... It makes it sound a bit more warm and it's sort of this like high piercing. It makes it just sound warm and nice and calm and it's a, it's a really good effect. It's too bright here. So we do this to, it doesn't make it dull. I mean, a little bit dull, but it does so in such a way that makes it warm. Next is of course, um, compression to make it sound more uniform. So we still want the hard notes to sound harder, but we don't necessarily want them to punch out like they are. So first we start with Poogie Child. Uh, it's my favorite reverb for natural sounds. It just sounds so good. And it's not on too harsh. I then have uh, a, a H comp as well, which is a bit uh, more punchy and does the real hard compression. But even then, like um, it's not too uh, effective. But the two comps are definitely better than the one. If you ever feel like one comp isn't enough, maybe reduce it so it's not doing as much and then add a second compressor, even if it's the same kind. It, it goes a lot further than just building up the the, the knee on the um, compressor, on the compressor, sorry. Next is pretty standard that you're going to hear in most um, uh, lo-fi tracks. It's the vinyl. This one's the isotope vinyl. I use a few different vinyl plugins, but you can just look them up and I'm sure you'll find some. Again, these are just the settings to change how much or effective it is. All we're doing is we're adding a bit of dust, as you can hear, crackling away. It adds a bit of wobble onto the sound. It changes the highs a little bit, adds a little bit of, um, you know, all it's doing is making it sound like it's an old vinyl and not a newly written piece of music. And uh, finally is the this, like, final compressor, which is just used to sidechain. Now, in terms of uh, actual composing this music, we're going really, really simple. We've got this... Yeah, okay, it's got three different sections, but it's just this beat that sort of, this uh, piano part that repeats each section a bunch. Um, we've got a very simple beat, as I'm sure you've heard. Which plays the whole time. Uh, in some tracks I varied it up a little bit. I may have had an A and a B section, sometimes even a C, but it's really like, the point is to be chill, relaxing, and it's not meant to be overpowering by any means. Added a few symbols and stuff to make each of these parts have a little bit more impactful. Here we've got a synth. It's just a very standard um, synth. And it, all it's doing is just filling in the void a little bit. And so if I, if I play it with, and you can't really hear it, but when I take it out, you can hear how it just makes the sound look so hollow. So all we're doing is um, just bringing that in there to provide a bit more um, to the sound, I guess. 
And finally here is something that I did a lot, is to have a featured instrument. So instead of playing a new melody or a new whatever chord progression or something, all I did was I added an instrument. I think this is a shakuhachi, I don't think it's a flute. Oh, it is actually literally a flute. Okay, never mind. With some uh, black hole and compression and whatnot. Um, but yeah, all it's doing is playing the melody, a tiny variation, very little, but it was really just to provide a little bit more depth uh, and interest without actually providing new material. Right, and of course I finished off with some, uh, some white noise because... Oh, the last thing I almost forgot to mention was with the drums. So it's a very simple beat, obviously. It's basically just like a, a rock beat or whatever, but slower. What we're going to do is we're going to place, so you can see, if I put this in the correct, the snare or the kick, it just depends on how you want to do it, is off beat, the tiniest bit. In this one, I put the snare a little bit later, but sometimes you, I mean, it's also good to put the kick a little bit later or earlier, whatever. It goes so far. Like, And just for the sake of it, I'm going to um, move these in so you can hear what it sounds like perfect. And now, normal. See how it just provides that laid back lo-fi feel, um, even though it's technically improficient, I guess. But yeah. Anyway, that's it. Go uh, enjoy the album and uh, subscribe and um, thanks for watching.